Festival. And tonight I'm coming to you from Little Bird Street at Danish House in Melbourne. And we're here tonight for a very special occasion. It's the Food and Wine Festival. And we're here to learn from Nordic, new Nordic cuisine specialist, Torsten Schmidt. And uh, he's going to talk to us very soon about some very special intricacies of the Nordic food culture. And if you'd love to know more about Nordic food and what it's all about, we have a great tour going there in August later this year. So click on Finland, it's a bit of a dodgy one, Finland on our website, and you will actually find all the details of this tour. Look forward to sharing the details with you. Yes, and if I forget how I looked, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we're Uh, which which made them proud, and some chef took that 
to another level. And I could find that at home, but now we didn't have a tradition to do that. Um, or be proud of it. Or, or work with it, make it a little more finer. Uh, so we, go, we, we, we took home and uh, we opened a restaurant. And in the beginning, yeah, it was like finding all the herbs myself, because I had like um, the guy called Roland, the Swedish guy in the beginning was in Copenhagen. He collected and then he was, it was three restaurants in the beginning, then what, six, and then ten and no more. He'd get his wild herbs. But we had no Roland, so we had to do it on. And I, I tell you, I really taste a lot of things you cannot eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and each year, the, the, the list of herbs were extended. So uh, I'm now at 184 different things to eat, and I'm not through with it yet. Um, and this makes it exciting. And also this, the work of how to work with season, because in Denmark the season is very defined. When it's winter, it's winter, especially the last two years. I would say after this last two years, nobody would say, oh, I wish for a white Christmas. <laughs> So, and, and then it's the spring and the summer and, 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 and the fall. And normally, as a chef in Denmark, you learn like it's the season is now, now it's the season for that vegetable or that fruit or that thing. But at Benning Smith, you have like a line, it's like the earth. Then you have the plant, it gets it's small, you eat all the plants, it, it grows a little bigger, you, you eat the leaves. And the next stage you can eat the uh, leaves and maybe the uh, stop over there. <laughs> Skull, yeah. Like slightly slightly uh, giving some warm uh, oil, not much. Then it goes in the classic season, which normally is uh, the fruit or the vegetable on this on this plant. Then you go uh, over season it, it gets thick and hard and then you can use the core of the plant. Uh, then uh, when the frost hits it normally False, but you can use the roots, and then it starts again. And each plant has the cycles, uh, and each, it, it tastes different at each stage. The texture is different, and the, the taste is different. So suddenly, <coughs> having only the classical season now is right. In this taste, you have a whole palette of new tastes and textures. Uh, and we started to write this down, and uh, it was a nice way to work and, and work with. Every chef says, oh, we, use, we, we only season the, the, the vegetables and, and the season. We use all the... But most chefs, they have been sitting in the office, phoning up the supplier and saying, I need four cases of this and two cases of that. And then they have a, like a paper with the learning in school and when the season now. Having no touch with what's actually happened in nature. Best example in Denmark is as far as in Denmark you say at St. Hans, uh, 21st of June, after that, no asparagus. When I go to, we have a organic garden, uh, own garden, big garden, it's like North Europe's biggest organic garden. And when you go there, the 22 of June, 23, 24, the asparagus are still there. It's not like 24 and uh, 22, the asparagus are like... <laughs> <laughs> Where the weather is, when it's stormy outside and it's stormy for three, four, five days, and you call Carl, uh, the fisherman said, yes, "Are you okay?" I, I cannot go. That's that's common sense. Then you have to switch something which art can be on the menu. Uh, so just follow the supply, and this this shapes actually the cuisine. And what we like to do, uh, it's very terroir like. One of, we have a lot of uh, different ways of, of being creative, but one of them is of course this terroir where the dish looks like the nature, the nature line, not everything cut round and, and square and, and you know. Um, one of the things we also work with is, um, is how you feel or the culture behind it. For instance, we do a dish which is uh, over bonfire. Back then the first version was we, we called it, actually in the kitchen we called it uh, Boy Scout, 
because it, 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 you, you, you know the smell of, of smoke in your in your clothes and the, sitting on a fire. And and we thought everybody has an idea. Everybody has tried to sit at, at the fireplace and doing the food. And so we did a dish where everything was prepared over bonfire. And what we realized was when we did this dish, that on the table something special happened. Everybody says eat at my restaurant. It's a unique uh, experience. But when is an experience unique when it's the same dish every day? Um, but here it was not only the dish, but the people at the table. Because when they smell the bonfire, suddenly Henning goes like, oh, I was Boy Scout 25 years ago. And they're like, we you know in our child for 20 years, you never told me that. <laughs> and suddenly stories creating. So I like the idea about when we do some dishes sometimes, we're actually just delivering the frame. Stories are the guys and girls sitting at the table. That's that's one of the things we also do. So, but I could talk about my passion the next <laughs> many years. So I just want to say thank you for having us here. I hope I can live up to uh, many years of uh, of uh, food uh, critics uh, gathering the knowledge and. Um, Without bringing uh, Ben and Jessica in any trouble, we, being, uh, we have been out and collecting things. <laughs> um, so I hope uh, I, I, it will be a great uh, dinner tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.